medic and as a scientist, I am very concerned, concerned about what appears to become the biggest epidemic of our times. When we talk of epidemics, usually the images that are conjured up are that of a plague, of cholera, of crowded hospitals, the influenza after the Great War. The numbers that we think of are 200,000 people killed in the UK, 50 million people killed worldwide. Headlines frightening you. But when we think of epidemics, we very seldom think of our grandmother alone and frightened, losing her battle with dementia. Yet the disease is as horrific as any of the others. It robs people of their memories, their personality, their intellect. Everything that makes us human is lost to this disease. And of course, the numbers are bad. Dementia is killing now about 47 million people in the world, more than 800,000 in the UK. Every seven seconds, there is a new patient diagnosed. Every three and a half minutes, a new patient in the UK. What are we doing about it? It's a problem. And it's a big problem because we don't know how it comes about. We don't know what causes it. Half of the patients are not even diagnosed, so they don't get social care or health care at all. Can you imagine if half of the cancer patients didn't get painkillers? And of course, there is no treatment to treat this disease. So what are we doing about it? Well, what we should be doing is to follow the example of cancer research. At the beginning of the previous century, people realized that the problem is big, the disease is spreading and it's affecting millions. The first big cancer charity, ICRF, came into formation. The government spent a concentrated amount of money and effort into cancer research. And today, we can say that thanks to research, more people are beating cancer than ever before. Cancer survival has doubled in the last 40 years. So what are we doing about dementia? Finally, in 2009, when we had more than half a million people in the UK, the country announced that it has a dementia strategy. The lawmakers realized that spending only 2.5% of the research budget of the country on dementia is not enough. We have to do a hell of a lot more. One year later, the National Audit Office found that less than half of the GPs know how to diagnose dementia. 10% of them know about the dementia strategy. And even today, our medical students, the future medics of this country, receive less than a week training out of five years on dementia. What about money. In 2012, the Prime Minister announced the challenge on dementia to deliver major improvements in care and research by 2015. That's this year. And he promised to do this by doubling the research money spent on dementia from 2.5% to 5% of the research budget. So, what has happened? This is where we are today. Cancer and cancer research draws about five, 250 pounds per patient 
in research. But this country only spends about 100 pounds per dementia patient on dementia research. We also know that diseases cost extreme amounts of money to society. And we try to meet those costs by investing more in research. For every thousand pounds spent on cancer care, we spend a hundred pounds on research in cancer. But for every thousand pounds spent on dementia care, we spend less than 10 pounds on research. And where's the community that should deliver the research to provide new treatment, new diagnostic protocols, the scientists with ideas and knowledge and methods? We are few and far between. For each one of us, there are eight scientists working on cancer. Clinicians don't like the dementia trials because it's poorly funded, there is not enough emphasis on it in medical training or research. There are no opportunities for career progression. There are no mentors out there. And I tell you, we need new blood to solve this problem. We need support. We need infrastructure. We need more funding for dementia research. And unless you join the fight to lobby the government, we never are going to get it. And if we don't get it, it means that we abandon the millions of patients to walk in solitude, alone, into the twilight of their human existence, alone. And remember, this patient may be your grandfather today, but in 20 years' time, it's going to be you. And in 40 years' time, it may be your children. Do something. Thank you.